You're watching Unreal Ant Gaming. This is Gohan from Dragon Ball Z. You want to see me turn Super Saiyan? Or should I take it to the next level? I'm also the narrator, too. Next time on Dragon Ball Z, make sure and smash subscribe to Unreal Ant Gaming. With Dragon Ball Super manga chapter number 64 now officially in the history books, the stage is now set for Goku to go all out while wielding the powers of Mastered Ultra Instinct, and considering Moro's current state and having to be depleted of energy, having to be completely battered, beaten, and bruised, one can assume that this is going to be the end of Moro as of course we near the end of the Galactic Patrol prison arc. However, as the battle wages on involving MUI Goku and Moro, there seems to be a little bit of foreshadowing going on in the background with the insinuation that Beerus has a very unsettling feeling about this particular fight, and with Moro having to allude to Goku and putting into question on who really is in control of this fight, the question going forward is are we going to witness Mastered Ultra Instant Goku completely demolish Moro by the end, or are we bound to witness a massive turn of events happen with Moro having to adapt and somehow overcome the powers of Mastered Ultra Instant Goku? As a quick reminder before we begin, if you guys are new to the channel and have a love and passion for all things Dragon Ball and anime related and want to be kept up to date with everything involving Dragon Ball then be sure to go on ahead and smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications to never miss a single upload on the channel as well as giving this video a big fat thumbs up by slapping that like button down below if you guys are simply stoked ready and excited to see how this is all going to end because in December of 2020, it'll mark two years ever since the debut of the Galactic Patrol Prisoner arc, and since then, so much has happened in this arc that I really cannot wait to see what Toei Animation is going to do once this is eventually animated, but the battle involving MUI Goku and Moro going forward may not go the way we think, even though Goku was shown absolutely eviscerating Moro without even having to break a sweat, there seems to be something more alluded to the idea on the overall narrative going forward in how this is all going to end, because it's interesting to go back to the conversation that Maris had with Goku inside the Room of Spirit in Time, when Goku basically flat out admitted that if there ever comes a time where someone steps up to the plate and does something bad, that Goku further ends up stepping up and becoming stronger himself, that way he will fight them as many times as it takes, until that said individual winds up joining the good side. But in this case here, Goku seems to be a little tad bit hesitant on killing Moro because there were several moments during the course of this battle to where Goku really wasn't fully acknowledging Moro by further having to engage him. He wasn't setting his sight directly in wanting to inflict physical damage, but instead he allowed his body to act on its own. So there is that possible chance that at some given point during the course of this engagement, we are going to see Moro possibly turn the tables on Goku, not with strength alone, but by having to devise a strategy good enough that it's going to help him get on by against Goku now, who is significantly more powerful than Moro ever could be. But even then, one must put this into perspective and ask, well, how exactly is Moro going to do this? Well, there are some key factors that many people seem to be forgetting here, and I want to go off on a limb and be one of the first ones, assumingly, to put out the idea that I think that Krillin, since he is holding the Sensu Beans, is going to arrive on the battlefield relatively late, and I think that with Krillin informing Goku that in fact he does have the Sensu Beans, with Moro retaining the knowledge that he has with Vegeta and several other people, it should come easy to him to know that these Sensu Beans could easily be the key to his recovery, in thus having to not only trick Goku just like he did with Vegeta and having to absorb 7-3, but getting himself far enough in taking these Sensu Beans and consuming assuming them to not only recover his strength, but also possibly having the Sensu Beans go as far enough as to recover the sealed gems that Moro has on his palms. Which, if you stop and think about it, this upcoming battle involving Goku and Moro isn't going to be as straightforward as many people would assume because the battle has yet to be decided even with Goku showing superiority over Moro because knowing Moro and knowing how shady, cunning, and crafty Moro can be, he is more than likely going to resort in using his magic once again and is clearly baiting Goku into this fight because 
he's probably going to either absorb energy or he's going to act on having to appeal to be helpless just to gain Goku's attention and just to gain some sort of sympathy in buying for enough time to strike at the opportune moment. And there was lots of foreshadowing going on involving this battle between the two because make no mistake about it, Goku can easily end this battle against Moro by either kamehameha him to death or using the Hakai. Anything is possible and quite frankly, if Goku wanted to literally beat Moro to death, he could do that. But it's not that straightforward, so there's going to be a massive monkey wrench being thrown into this fight because by the looks of where they're going with this battle and by the looks of where they're going with this narrative, it's more than likely that Moro is simply going to bait Goku and he's going to dangle something in front of him that's going to prevent Goku from finally finishing the job against him. And a good example of a villain that was using something as a ploy to dangle over Goku's head in preventing Goku from killing them was Merge Zamasu. In the Dragon Ball Super manga, Goku actually used the Hakai against Zamasu and he was going to erase Zamasu on the spot until Zamasu was smart enough to use one of his portals in dragging Mai right in front of Goku because the question going forward from that moment was, is Goku going to make that call in destroying and erasing Zamasu as a means of also doing that to Mai? He wasn't going to have it, so instead, Zamasu bought himself a momentary lead and he gained the upper hand against Goku. So that's why we can't overlook this, only because at this current point in time, there is no other version of Moro that's more dangerous than a desperate Moro. And we've seen Moro get desperate before, and when Moro gets desperate, Moro becomes very cunning in his overall approach of obtaining leverage over his opponent. And I think that because of Beerus telegraphing this bad feeling, and with everyone having to be healed courtesy of Dende, and with Krillin making his way onto the battlefield, you can clearly see that this arc is far from over, but the question going forward is will the arc actually end with Goku being fully depleted out of Ultra Instinct and losing the power entirely, or is Moro simply going to dangle something in front of Goku's head that's going to buy him a momentary lead to either escape or create a counterattack because so as long as those emblems and those gems are sealed, he can't really do anything to copy anyone's ability, so it's really up in the air right now if the Sensu Beans could actually allow Moro to fully be able to use those gems again and copy someone's abilities because if that ends up being the case, then I still don't think he's able to get behind Goku fast enough to grab onto him and steal his power and abilities because, quite frankly, Master Ultra Instant Goku would simply be too fast for him. So I think that there is going to be another diversion and I think that a lot of people had voiced their opinions on what they think is going to happen because the way this is structured, there's going to be an interference of some sorts. I really don't want to see Beerus get involved only because I think that they should save Beerus and Goku for them to have their own moment later on as perhaps maybe they want to go down the route of giving them a rematch or something else by keeping Beerus aside. Unless of course Moro wants to fully provoke or go against the God of Destruction himself, then that is an entirely different story. But I think that basically right now, what we're looking at is an absolute slaughter on Goku's end, but don't expect Goku to actually go through and finishing this without there being something dangling in front of him. And I think that because of all the foreshadowing, it's as clear as day that Goku should finish him off on the fly, but the question is, is he going to show him mercy? Is he going to give him some energy to recuperate and leave? Is he going to be dumb enough to give Moro a Sensu Bean to fight him at his max? At this point, we don't know, but we are going to find out on October 20th when the next manga chapter drops, which I think is going to shock the community only because I really do believe that Goku is going to need Vegeta and whatever else is going to happen is going to be circumstantial because I think that to defeat Moro, it's going to require a team effort to do so. And I do believe that Vegeta could perhaps maybe possess some techniques or some abilities that could further give Goku leeway in destroying Moro if Moro winds up holding something against Goku. But I think that by the end, we have to look at this from an objective point of view because surely enough, Goku can easily finish off Moro, but the question is, is he really going to do it without Moro having to come up with a plan to stop him? But by the end of all of this, I want to get your thoughts in the comment section below involving three specific things. Number one, do you guys believe that it's possible for MUI Goku to completely annihilate Moro in the upcoming manga chapter, that being Dragon Ball Super Manga chapter number 65 in October? And if so, how is he going to do it? And number two, 
if you guys believe that Moro is somehow going to overcome Goku, that he's going to somehow outsmart Goku and even best him in battle, then how is he going to do it? Is he going to do it as a means of using his magic? Is he going to do it as a means of somehow being able to break the seal that Maris had put on his gems? Is he going to flee the scene? And number three, how do you guys see the Galactic Patrol prisoner arc ending? By the end of all of this, when it's all said and done, what do you guys believe is going to go down involving said individuals? Because at this point in time, we can actually give our heroes the upper hand in this fight, but given the fact that Beerus and even Moro are kind of alluding to something greater than what's being shown right now on the current battlefield, sure, we can say that Goku is in the lead and he's going to be in the lead until something happens, but until that one thing happens, is it going to be the game changer that a lot of people are expecting, or is Mastered Ultra Instant Goku simply going to destroy Moro? So again, I want to get your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for your time. If of course you guys enjoyed, then be sure to go in ahead and smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications to never miss a single upload on the channel, as well as also giving this video a big thumbs up if you guys enjoyed. Tune back in for more. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, all the social media platforms will be located down below, and I'll be seeing each and every single one of you guys down in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your time and i'll check you all down below take it easy everybody peace and the quick little reminder before you guys go if you guys are unaware i do have a second gaming channel located down in the description box below so be sure to head on over to unreal royale and hit that subscribe button along with turning on all notifications as to there you guys will find all different kinds of gaming content that you will not get to find on unreal and gaming titles and video games such as grand theft auto call of duty gears of war dragon ball z dokkan battle Dragon Ball Z Legends, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3, Minecraft, Blair Witch, and many other retro games on that channel. So if you guys are into gaming, then make sure you guys subscribe over on Unreal Royale. I want to thank you all so much for your time, and I'll catch you all in the next one. This is the Galactic Emperor of the Universe, and of course I'm here to tell you to subscribe to Unrelent Gaming. Also follow Unrelent Gaming on these social media platforms to stay connected at all times. And if you don't, then very soon you will all be dead! <laughs> oh, did someone say unrelent gaming? Oh my god! The fuck, Zarbon? Put on some clothes! Well, why don't you put on any clothes? What? I don't need clothes! But, uh, Jesus Christ, that's huge! <laughs> what, Broly? Freezer. Uh-oh. Prepare to die! <laughs> <laughs> Get over here! Tell these mortals that I'm the biggest Unreal Engine gaming fan! This is my moment! I'm a part of his notification squad! Universe 7 can have all the fun! I just want the food! And don't forget to leave a comment on this video! Show some love for the best community on YouTube! <laughs> K -k -k -k